Hey everybody, I'm Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher. And you may have noticed if you've been studying trigonometry for a while that we tend to focus on smaller angles at the beginning, stuff that's under 90 degrees, acute angles. And so when we want to talk about the trig ratios for larger angles, we need a little bit of notation and we have to have a common place to work from. So we're going to learn about standard position, which is a way for us to draw angles on a grid, on a Cartesian XY grid so that we, uh, we're all referring to them in the same way. So I'm just going to do a quick little sketch here of an xy set of xy axes. So there's y, there's x, this is the origin right here, 0, 0. And I'm going to draw an angle, an acute angle that's in standard position, something like about 30 degrees. So this is the angle that I'm referring to right here. That's the angle that I've currently drawn in standard position. So this portion over here is called the initial arm, or starting arm, but we call it the initial one. The angle 30 degrees is the angle between the initial arm and this other one that we've drawn up here, which is called the terminal arm. That's where it ends. So starting and ending arms. This is the 30 degree angle drawn in standard position. Now there's only one way to draw this angle, 30 degrees, just like this. If it was somewhere else on here, it wouldn't be in standard position. So we always measure from the positive x-axis, and we go in this direction here, which is counterclockwise. So that's how we do it for positive angles. So we're going to draw a bunch of angles like this just to make sure that we understand it. And then I'll even show you one that is a negative angle. So let's start. I'll just have a little instruction here. Draw these angles in standard position. And for each one, we'll just sketch our little XY grid. So let's start with 75 degrees. Draw myself a little set of axes here, and I'll grab a color. 75 degrees is an acute angle, starting at 0 here. 90 would be this vertical line here, the positive y-axis, so 75 is probably something right about there. There's the terminal arm, and this is the angle, 75 degrees. Okay, let's try another one. How about something that's more than 90? The whole reason we're doing this. Here's 135 degrees. Y-axis, X-axis. So this is 90. This is 180, measuring from over here. That's 180 degrees. 135 is exactly halfway between those. So the terminal arm will be here. Measuring from the positive x-axis, we have 90, and then another 45 to there is 135 degrees. There's 135 in standard position. Now let's see if we can squeeze one more over here on this side of the page. 210 degrees. Y-axis. X-axis. 210 is more than 180, so we're going to come all the way around to, well, 180 would be here, 210 is an additional 30 degrees past that. Ooh, that looks closer to 45, but we'll say that that's pretty good. So that is 210 degrees drawn in standard position. Notice this is even more than 180, and that's fine. How about 270 degrees? You might recognize that number, that's a nice one. zero, 90, 180, that's 270 right there, the negative y-axis. So the angle starts here, all the way around to this spot. So I'll just kind of draw over top of it with my pink pen. That's 207 degree, 270 degrees drawn in standard position. about 340. 
Well, if I start at zero over here, maybe I'll just label zero, 90, 180, 270, 360 would be if I got all the way back to the beginning again. So I'm a little bit before that, 20 degrees less than 360, something like that. Once again, starting at the beginning, going around all the way around, not quite to the very end, not a full circle, it's only 340 degrees. Okay, we're going to do a couple more. Um, let's start with this one, negative 30 degrees. Now I had mentioned earlier that when you draw these, we rotate counterclockwise, the way we've been doing so far. But when you have a negative angle, like negative 30, zero is here. So moving to negative 30 would be kind of moving backwards. In our case, that's clockwise. So it's 30 degrees clockwise. And we would write negative 30 degrees kind of right in there. This is equivalent to, or related to, going all the way around in this direction and getting to 330 degrees. So 330 degrees and negative 30 degrees have the same terminal arm. They're not the same angle, but they have the same terminal arm and they're in the same spot when they're drawn in standard position. Okay, one more. How about 400 degrees? Hmm. Well, I said we were going to work with larger angles and that one's pretty big. This is zero. 90, 180, 270. Hmm. This is also 360 degrees. So if you did a full circle and came back to the beginning, that would be 360. 400 is an additional 40 degrees past that. So it's kind of like this. Just go all the way around here, and I'll make it like a little spiral so you can see it. And that would be 400 degrees. So the terminal arm for 400 degrees is the same as the terminal arm for 40 degrees. And you can get that if you have a number that's over 360 or 360 or more, you can subtract 360 from it repeatedly until you get to something that is less than 360. In our case, 40 degrees. This even works with very big angles. For example, if I had like a thousand and I subtract 360 degrees, let's see, that's going to be 640 degrees. Well, that's not quite enough, so if I take 640 and subtract another 360 from it, let's see, that's going to be, what, 280 degrees? Did I do that right? And so 1,000 degrees has the same terminal arm as 640 or 280, so that would be down here. It would be down here in the fourth quadrant. Okay, I hope that helps. We're going to need this as we move forward because we're going to need to uh, calculate the ratios, like the sine, cosine, tangent, and so on for these very large angles. So we'll be doing that soon. Thanks.